Now here's the efficacy results and very nice results. So in the experimental arm with the BSI-201, 48% response rate compared to 16% in the gem carbo arm. So very highly statistically significant. And then if you do the clinical benefit where you combine sort of stable disease with the responses, even better. 62% clinical response, clinical benefit rate compared to 21% without the PARP inhibitor. So um, b real nice result. And here's the progression-free survival. So even though this wasn't really the main point of the study, the standard arm, progression-free survival, three months. So their chemo only lasted for three months. And that's shown right here. With PARP inhibitor, that was extended to seven months, so median survival, uh, progression-free survival here to here, and these curves are stayed separated. And even though some of these people could cross over to the experimental arm, so um, fairly dramatic there. Here's the overall survival, same thing. So in the experimental, or in the standard arm, about six months um, median overall survival, which was increased to nine months. Um, with the PARP inhibitor. So very provocative um, data there. They did not see any differences between the groups in terms of toxicity, so again, very well tolerated um, regimen. So in conclusion, they said that um, BSI-201 could improve clinical outcome, very well tolerated, no um, severe toxicity, adding that to chemotherapy, and improvement in both um, progression-free survival and overall survival. So um, that has led to the design of a phase three trial, which is just getting started now. And this one is from um, this BIPAR Sciences for the BSI-201. And this is a randomized study um, for metastatic disease with triple negative breast cancer, and I think it's as upfront treatment probably. Um, so that's where we're at with that. And so in conclusion of the whole talk here this afternoon, what I would say that this concept of synthetic lethality, where you could have interaction of several different genes, and if you combine, have a certain combination of inactivating that activity, Rather than having tumor growth, you'll actually have tumor cell kill. So that's really a scientific breakthrough. And that is classical translational science, taking something that you hypothesize in the lab, that you get uh, lab uh, studies and evidence for, and then moving it into the clinic and showing that it actually works in clinical care. So very exciting there. Um, and. Traditionally, we've thought that we have to have agents that kill DNA. But it turns out that the cancer cells are smarter than that because they can repair that DNA and keep living. So now the science is shifting over to, well, how do we stop that DNA repair? So you're going to see a whole new uh, science and a whole new drug development looking at um, how DNA repair occurs and then how we can manipulate that to stop cancer from growing and from spreading. So it should be exciting time, and you'll, I think you'll be seeing a lot more information about these PARP inhibitors. So with that, I will stop, and uh, thank you, and I'll take any questions you might have. We don't have any, the PARP inhibitor study here, as far as I know, but we're going to try to get that. So, um, But yeah, so very exciting. As I understand it, it's being used only in treatment failures. At some point, do you think this will be used as an initial form of treatment? Yeah, the question was it's only being used in treatment failures. And so, so for oncology drug development, that's how they do that. They bring the drugs out in the metastatic disease, and then they'll move them up. And I, and I bet, you know, I, I would agree that they'll eventually move it up into adjuvant therapy. Um, you would think that would help, but uh, sometimes that doesn't always work out, like the uh, colon cancer trial with uh, Vastin that showed, even though that works in metastatic disease, did not improve survival in adjuvant therapy. But these are some pretty dramatic um, responses, so hopefully it will be something we can use earlier on. 
understand that you're trying to stop the repair of the DNA to the cancer cells, but how do you target the DNA damage and you want to stop repair of the cancer cell rather than just than the uh, normal cells as well? Because they go to undergo some of those damage. Right, the question is how do you prevent damage to the normal cell? And that's the beauty of this particular model, is that the, the normal cell, as long as it has just one copy of the BRCA1 or 2 uh, gene that's working and they're making a protein, the PARP inhibitors won't affect that because they have a second pathway that's working fine. Um, so that's the beauty of having a tumor suppressor model where it takes two hits to the um, DNA, the chromosome, to block the function of that protein. So as long as one allele is working, you're okay. As soon as that second allele gets blocked out, then you have trouble. So in a tumor suppressor model, that works. In a different model, would it work? You know, I don't know. Um, so, but so far, um, that seems to be holding up. So pretty neat, huh? <laughs> All right, thanks a lot.